measuring brightness or relating luminous intensities of light emitted by different sources using certain standards and techniques. The basic principles involved in photometry are a light is the energy on the flow. It emanates from self-luminous bodies like the sun, a candy or incandescent lamp. All these sources emit radiant energy which causes sensation of vision on the retina of human eye. In general, the term light includes the visible region of electromagnetic energy spectrum. Of course, it forms a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. With the exception of the objects that might be at absolute zero, all objects emit electromagnetic radiations. By recording this emitted or reflected radiation and applying the knowledge of its behavior, remote sensing analysts develop a knowledge of the character of features on the Earth's surface. The most familiar form of electromagnetic radiation is visible light, which forms only a small but important portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's have a look at the major divisions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Here comes the visible region, next to visible region or ultraviolet and towards the right we have infrared, microwave and radio wave frequencies over the long wavelength region and having low frequency. Towards the left of shorter wavelength region and higher frequency we have X-rays and gamma rays. Here the visible region ranges from 0.5 to 0.7 microwaves whereas the UV region from 0.3 to 0.38 microns, X-rays 0.03 to 300 nanometers and gamma rays less than 0.03 nanometers. Coming to infrared region, it ranges between 0.7 microns to 1 nanometer. Microwave region ranges between 1 millimeter to 30 centimeters and radio wave frequencies greater than 30 centimeters. Of course, the limits of visible spectrum are defined by the sensitivity of the human visible system. Optical properties of visible radiation were first investigated by Newton during 1665 and 66. They revealed that visible light can be divided into three basic segments. Today we know these segments as additive primitives. The major components of additive primitives are blue, green and red which range between 0.4 to 0.5 microns. Green ranges between 0.5 to 0.6 microns and red between 0.6 to 0.7 microns. Equal proportions of the three additive primitives combine to form white light. The color of the object is defined by the color of the light it reflects. Intermediate colors are formed when an object reflects two or more of the additive primitives. Similarly, we have subtract two primitives. Representation of colors in films, paintings and similar images are formed by combination of three substractive primitives that define colors of the pigments and dyes. Each of the three substractive primitives absorbs a third of the visible spectrum. They are yellow, cyan and magnetar. For example, yellow absorbs blue, reflects red and green, cyan absorbs red, reflects blue and green, magnetar absorbs green and reflects red and blue. Of course, a mixer of equal proportions of pigments of three segments primitives yield back. What they specify? The additive primitives are of interest in matters concerning radiant energy. The substractive primitives specify colors of the pigments and dyes used in reproducing colors in films, photographic prints and their images. These are mainly used as remote sensing models. Remote sensing typically takes one of the three basic forms depending on the wavelength of energy detected. The simplest is to record the reflection of solar radiation from Earth's surface. A second strategy is to record radiation emitted rather from reflected from the Earth's surface. A third class of remote sensing instruments generate their own energy and then records the reflection of that energy from the Earth's surface. Thank you. Any questions, you can mail me at salajabhushan.gmail.com.